Forget everything you heard, The Midnight Meat Train is a movie that is beyond the shadow of a reasonable doubt titled The Midnight Meat Train. Oh, they'll try to trick you. They'll try to tell you that the title of the film is The Midnight Train, but don't let them. This is The Midnight Meat Train. It's a train that comes at midnight. It's full of meat. Sounds normal enough so far, right? Well, this meat? The meat in question? It's human meat. So it's actually a weird thing for a train to be full of at any time of day, let alone midnight, the scariest time. In the 1980s, Clive Barker looked over the horror landscape and found something lacking. For all of the spooky little guys running around chopping people up, there didn't seem to be anyone that posed an intellectual threat. It was just guys with knives, or sometimes guy-slash-knife hybrids. So he created Hellraiser and later Candyman to class up the joint a little. You know, these weren't big dumb movies for teens to grab a cheap thrill. These weren't mass-market appeal by the numbers slash em ups These were mature films with themes and ideas and everything. Sometimes there was weird sex stuff, because these movies were for grown-ups, and grown-ups have all sorts of weird sexual picadillos. He also wrote the short story that was adapted into 2008's The Midnight Me Train, which asked the question, what if there was a guy killing people on a train? Specifically on a New York subway, at midnight, which would no doubt make it into the top five scariest things I've seen on a subway. Said train killer is Mahogany, who grabs people and smashes them with big ol' hammers and then does various gross butcher things to their body. Mahogany is portrayed by Vinnie Jones, playing against type as a quiet and methodical killer. He's the highlight of the film, acting in this cold-blooded, elegant, uncannily deliberate way all throughout the brutal affair. Pursuing Mahogany is Leon, portrayed by nine-time Academy Award nominee Bradley Cooper, a street photographer who's obsessed with the whole midnight meat situation going on here. Forget about Choo Choo Charles. That's not a scary train. We got all the thrills and chills you'll need here on the Midnight Meat Train. What happens in this movie, you might ask? Well, I, I already kind of told you, really. Because it's based on a short story, and boy, can you tell, because there's not a lot of midnight meat on these midnight bones until the very end where the movie goes, if you'll pardon the expression, completely off the rails. Leon is a down-on-his-luck photographer who does Nightcrawler-type stuff, like the movie Nightcrawler, not the X-Men. He gets a chance to show his work to some snooty art broker who is noticeably Brooke Shields. You can't fool me. She tells him his photos are not good enough, but she recognizes his talent and tells him to come back when he's really nailed it. Leon's a passionate guy and the thing he wants to do is really capture New York because nobody's done that yet. A thing he actually says in the movie. Nobody's ever really taken photos of New York. Not the way he would do it. What interests you? The city. Why? Because no one's ever captured it. Not the way it really is. That night, he takes a photo of a model getting harassed by some local street toughs, who Mahogany later makes into midnight meat. The model, not the toughs. Then he makes more and more meat, sometimes from an MMA guy, sometimes even from a Ted Raimi. Leon starts to get obsessed with, with Mahogany and follow him around, and he starts to imagine what it would be like if he was a train murderer. And then he discovers that Mahogany is a train murderer, which is convenient. This is kind of like that thing, you know, how in movies when someone meets a serial killer, it makes them slowly turn into a serial killer too for some reason, as though being a serial killer is contagious? Personally, maybe this is just me, I think I could be around any kind of serial killer, wouldn't move the needle for me. Like, I, I wouldn't be tempted to do any murders, I don't think. Depending on the circumstances, maybe I would murder the, the serial killer in self-defense. It's just, it's a weirdly common trope. I don't relate to it at all. I don't feel like proximity to serial killers makes people into serial killers. I am reasonably confident that nothing on earth could make me into a serial killer. I don't know, prove me wrong. What would it take to become a serial killer? Sound off in the comments below, but keep in mind, those comments may be used against you in criminal proceedings someday. Leon gets grabbed up on the MMT and brought to a slaughterhouse where he has a dream of a bunch of wet puppets caressing him with their ooey gooey dripping appendages. I mean, we've all had that dream, come on. When he wakes up, he has a big sigil carved into his chest and he starts acting erratically. He stops being a vegetarian, for example, and starts suddenly craving meat. How scary, can you imagine how scared you'd be if someone ate meat? Get this also, the train conductor knows that he's on a midnight meat train and he helps Mahogany when he gets overwhelmed. Also, the police are in on it? Oh no, this goes all the way to the midnight meat top. Leon's starting to look paranoid and his fiance Maya is not having it. 
But then later, despite the fact that she's made it clear that she doesn't believe any of the things he is saying, she decides to go investigate it too, just to, just to see if he's crazy or not. Which any reasonable person would assume he is, because he's acting like a complete lunatic. Like, I watched the movie. I know he's right, and I don't believe him. But his photos of meat and train-related violence impress the art broker. Come on, that's clearly Brooke Shields. We can all tell. She lets him put up uh, his photos in an exhibition alongside some paintings that Clive Barker did, which is a nice touch. Blah, blah, blah. The night of Leon's big art show, Maya's on the meat train. That's a pleasing little phrase, Maya's on the meat train. That's the title of a porno, probably. Leon has a little one-liner. I said, where are you going? I got a train to catch. <laughs> And he puts on a butcher's apron and grabs some knives for a showdown with Mahogany. They have a good old-fashioned butcher fight, obviously. It's extremely gross, and I love it. At this point, you probably think you've guessed the twist ending. You probably think, I see what's happening here. I've figured it out. You can't fool me, Midnight Meat Train. Leon's gonna become the butcher. And you're right, of course. But that is not the twist. Trust me when I say you would not figure out the twist ending of this movie, no matter how hard you tried. This movie has one of the most bonkers, out of nowhere endings that I've ever seen, and I've seen some shit. Spoilers from here on out, because I'm about to tell you the midnight meat twist of the midnight meat train, if you care about that sort of thing at all. Though quite frankly, I think you could go into this movie knowing the twist and I don't think it would hurt your enjoyment all that much, because the thing that's fun about the movie is all the gross train murders, not the story. Turns out that the reason Mahogany has been doing all that train butchering is to feed all the midnight meat to a, a race of subterranean monster people. This helps keep some balance between humans and monsters or some shit like that. The monsters who have existed since before humanity give their inner circle super strength and immortality, I think. And now that Leon has killed the old midnight meat butcher, he has to become the new midnight meat butcher, not unlike the Santa Claus. So why don't the monster people simply eat any other type of meat? Like the enormous abundance of meat which exists on the planet Earth. Unclear. This genuinely comes out of nowhere and it rules. There had been no supernatural elements prior to this. There had been no real indication of anything like this happening. Nothing in the movie contradicts it, sure. Like nothing in the movie makes it not make sense you know, be above and beyond like the amount that it makes no sense just because it's very silly. But it, it still feels like, well, that shouldn't be the ending. That's not it, right? That, that can't be how this one ends. But it does, and it's incredible. I cannot tell you the level of hooting and hollering I did when I first watched this movie. This is a big swing, and it mostly misses. But you have to admire the creativity and confidence. Say what you will, you did not see that one coming. In the short story, apparently, the monster guys project some sort of psychic hold over people, and that's why Leon had been becoming more and more butchery throughout the story. In the movie, it, it doesn't even seem related. It feels like Leon would have arrived at being a midnight meat butcher, whether or not there were monster men. It's gloriously dumb. There's some really over-the-top splatterpunk violence that I can't even get close to showing here on YouTube. Bowels getting disemmed, horrible CGI's popping out, Vinnie Jones scraping off his superfluous nipples. It's all very silly, it's all very over the top, and it seems to know exactly what it is. A modern day B-movie, like in the, like literally a B-movie. I know you wanna make a bunch of memes about B-movie. I mean a real B-movie, okay? Can, can we, you're probably looking for me to do some sort of thoughtful analysis on the Midnight Meat Train. To ask questions like, what does it tell us about Midnight Meat society? But I would not insult this movie by implying it has any deeper meaning than, hey, look at this f***ed up train. I get that it's half-assedly kind of attempting some sort of class metaphor, this old inner circle of people who control public infrastructure and the police, literally feeding upon the people who ride the subway, who throughout the movie we are reminded are poor and desperate, the way that Leon's ambitions of being a high society photographer mirror his eventual service to the underground monster guys, and how Brooke Shields shows a similar disdain for poor people that the train conductor showed towards all human life. I want to know what comes next. I want to see the face of the businessman when the filth touches him. I get it. It's there, I guess. It, it's just that it doesn't matter. It, it isn't relevant to why anyone would enjoy this movie. There are three things to love about The Midnight Meat Train. Number one, 
Vinnie Jones doing an unlikely amount of incredibly violent murders, all of which are delightfully gruesome, all of which contrast beautifully with the stillness and poise he brings to the character. Number two, the very silly twist ending which goes so much harder than it needed to. And number three, of course, the title. Can we talk about the title of this film for a second? I've had a lot of fun at the expense of the title of this movie, but I gotta tell you, it is absolutely the perfect title. It's silly, but it also perfectly conveys the very silly, albeit completely straight-faced tone of Midnight Meat Train. There's no winking to the camera in this, but, but like, you have to know going in, since this is a movie that is titled The Midnight Meat Train, it's gonna be a little tongue-in-cheek. Which is why it's so disappointing that Lionsgate briefly tried to retitle this movie to The Midnight Train. And I get it. I totally get it. Everybody laughed in the theater when I saw a trailer for this, okay? And Meat Train does sound like a euphemism for a penis. That is not lost on me. I can see why some visionless studio executive thought that this would be a problem rather than an asset. But The Midnight Train, first of all, makes me think of Don't Stop Believing, so that's an issue, but is itself too subdued and ethereal a title. Nobody should expect subtlety from this movie. It is literally about being hit over the head with a hammer. Thankfully, they seem to have recognized this error and reverted to the original title. The title this movie earned, the title this movie deserves. Should you watch The Midnight Meat Train? Maybe. It's not gonna change your life. But if you don't mind the gore, or like me, have some sort of deep psychological wound that makes you enjoy that sort of thing, it'll kill a couple of hours. Midnight Meat Train. Midnight Meat Train. Midnight Meat Train? It's a Midnight Meat Train.